Marcus Blake with that uh, nerd show, and we are speaking with director Shren Liu about his new film, Bloom. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us today and uh, talking to us about your film. Uh, I just want to jump right in and uh, tell us a little bit about this film and how, you, and how this project came about for you. Yeah, so uh, my name is Shren Liu. I'm the writer and director of Bloom. This is my first feature film. And this film is in San Luis Obispo International Film Festival's short scene competition this year. Um, the film is about a young man met his younger self at a beautiful beach. And the, the younger one wanted to know about his future. However, the older one wants to remember his past, his past memories. So they began to exchange stories to each other. And throughout the whole film, I'm trying to discuss farewells in our lives, saying goodbye to all the important people in our lives. So it's a pretty um, poetic and romantic film, yeah. Okay. Well, I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, I think we all kind of dream about being able to talk to our future self and maybe mm -hmm. a little insight so we don't make the mistakes. But, you know, when you're older, you do want to look back at the past and remember the good times. So mm -hmm. there is that kind of blend that goes with it. Um, what, uh, I mean, what inspired this notion for you to do this film? Yeah, um, yeah, I'm actually a, I'm a, I'm a really a fan of Andrei Tarkovsky's films and also Hou Xiaoxian's films. And lots of their films have themes of having like a nostalgic uh, feeling in it. I'm a big fan of that. And I also really love uh, Ingman Bergman's film. Uh, okay. This film is kind of inspired from Wild Strawberry too, because it's all about a memory, the memories of a man. And however, this is a much younger character. <laughs> so, uh, and the story majority of this film is inspired from, is inspired from my real life experiences, especially um, the experience that I had with my girlfriend and we were separated for two years. So this script was written during those two years. Oh, wow. um, however, yeah, however, this film is not only about uh, Mu Ke and his love interest Song Yu uh, in the film, it's also about all the people who have touched him um, in his heart during the childhood. So it's about saying goodbye to all those important people. And um, clearly this is a romantic film. It's about love, but I think it has a broader meaning for love. It's about love between uh, like, you know, the love from his mother and also love from Miss Xie, who is his Chinese teacher in elementary school wow. and also the love from his classmates. And all these things adds up to, you know, this film. Yeah. You feel like that that kind of reflection makes you a better person, especially more able to love? Yeah, I would think so. And also, you know, I think it's a, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 I think so. Yeah. Also, I really, you know, you know, we always say that seize the moment. So, you know, I really, you know, see everything I have right now is very precious because I'm afraid right. I'll have to you know say goodbye to them or the people someday in the future so yeah I think that's kind of realization that I have throughout this filmmaking as well yeah well I I, I kind of reminded me of something a, an English professor told me once in college mm -hmm. that you know the greatest love that we have is through our goodbyes you mm -hmm. know when we really look upon uh, the people that have touched our lives and we know we have to say goodbye to them or move on, whether yeah. it's death or whatever. Um, yeah. And it gives us a chance to have a lot of reflection on how those people affected us, you know, how they inspired us and, you know, made us the people we are. Um, okay. So it, this is, uh, because this is set during, uh, uh, Be in Beijing during the late 90s, mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of an interesting time as well because that's it was 97 when the Beijing reverted back to China and it wasn't the colony of Britain anymore. Um, mm -hmm. did, did any of that have any? I mean, well, let me rephrase this question. Mm -hmm. um, the backdrop of it being in the late 90s in Beijing, um, how, how did that come about? Was it because you uh, or was it? Yeah, a, yeah. A, so yeah, so I was born in Beijing and I, I, I grew up in China. Uh, um, however, I came to the United States to study when I was 18 years old. So I've been living here uh, for many years too. Uh, yeah, I, I grew up in China and I think uh, in 1990s, that's an important 
time that you know China is taking some um, reforms for the economy. Yeah. So I think a major issue is that you know people <laughs> are you know kind of different from what they were before. And right. as you can see, uh, especially in the family state, constantly, you know, like in this particular story, the parents will argue about issues about money. And right. they're like, you know, the, 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 the wife is kind of accusing the husband that they can't afford a car. Right. <laughs> and, yeah, that's kind of, well, the, that Volkswagen is actually very typical car in China during that time. So if, if people want to buy a car during that time, it's got to be a Volkswagen, exactly right. the same car like that. <laughs> so it's kind of in my memory too. And um, yeah, and um, yeah, that's a very special time. I think that's, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think a particular place at a particular place in history is its own character within any, within any story. So that's why I was curious about that, you know, that all this particular time in Beijing, because you talk about, in times are changing reforms and then, you know, um, coming out of, of what China used to be under Mao's rule and then stuff like that. Um, so, but uh, here's an interesting question. Um, up kind of in the 90s mm -hmm. uh what do you feel like is special about the 90s compared to other decades i i mean i i graduated high school in 96 so i'm like i'm very much a 90s kid and looking mm -hmm. back after 25 years it's kind of like you know music movies uh what mm -hmm. was going on at that time but for you what is so special about the 90s um to be honest, I was born in 1990, so <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> might be difficult to answer. Yeah, I was only yeah, I, I yeah, <laughs> I think, but yeah, I I really enjoyed my childhood in Beijing, and uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, I'm sad to see that some of the well, because well, because of the uh, you know the city have changed a lot right uh, throughout these years, and uh, Beijing is kind of a little bit different from it, what it wore um, right. when I was a little kid. But yeah, I still enjoy the city. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, with this being your first feature, um, what, is, what was the hardest, hardest thing for you as a writer and director doing this film? Something yes. that you can pass on to other first timers. Mm, yeah, this is, um, so this is my first feature film. And uh, I think, well, obviously this film, this film is very personal. It's a highly personal film. Uh, however, I want to jump out of my comfort zone for my next film. So I think a lot of like great films and great art is kind of combination of personal experience and impersonal e experience. So the artist can, you know, combine these two kind of experiences and then create something that doesn't exist, that's something really new a feeling, yeah, you know, and thinking. And yeah, and this film, I think it, it's kind of purely inspired from my personal experiences. So for my next film, I want to try to do something new. And that's why I'm actually writing a sci-fi as well. But it has- oh, well, uh, well, you piqued our interest already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of um, our forte here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I already have a draft draft for that, but that film also has a nostalgic, uh, nostalgic um, feeling and theme in it. So which make it kind of um, unique so I'm working on that one and at well, the same now, time, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well yeah, now that ahead. you've done this uh, first film, I mean, do you feel like, you know, it's gonna be much easier because uh, you've gotten this first one out of the way? Mm, yeah, yeah. And I think I really learned a lot through making this film and uh, um, through every aspect of the film. And I think as a director, you can really learn a lot through filmmaking because there are so many great people involved in every production. Right. And you can always, you know, learn from other people, you know, getting inspired from other people. So I think for directors, it's really great that, you know, you can learn so much things like, and um, yeah. 
So right. I'm well, looking forward to yeah. So as I've mentioned before with this interview, we always love to ask a nerdy mm -hmm. question to all mm -hmm. of our filmmakers. That's okay. uh, the one question you're not prepared for. It's our way of <laughs> testing your inner nerd. Uh, <laughs> so here's the question. If you could have a superpower or some kind of weapon of choice from within the nerd universe, and you can have more than one, but if you could have those things to fight the forces of evil, what would you choose? Wow. I so I can have more than one power, right? Right. Or only one. No, you can have more than one. I mean, we've we've had people say they want telepathy and lightsabers. So I mean, okay. we just we're just curious to see what we what would you choose if you had to go out and fight the forces of evil? Yeah. So first, I want to be able to travel in time. So I want to be a time <laughs> traveler. <laughs> oh, I, that's interesting. It's also kind of related to my film. Is I'm a big but, fan of discussing time. <laughs> yeah, I want to travel in time. Also, I want to have power of you know something about fire. Like I, I don't know, but I I always like. I play a lot of video game. I play video games. I always choose like magicians or like characters that's able to use fire. So <laughs> I don't know. I want to have uh, fire ability. <laughs> all right. Well, since you mentioned video game and I got like, time for one more question, I got to ask is we are that nerd show. As you can tell, we've got our gaming setups and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, what has been your favorite game to play in the last couple of years? Um. There's a pretty recent game. It's called Genshin Impact. I don't know if you know about Genshin Which one? Impact. Genshin Impact. Yeah. Genshin you know Impact. It. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Genshin Impact. However, I was also a player in uh, World of Warcraft when I was younger. <laughs> I, I'm I'm a fan of that too. I I played a magician. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah, we um, we love to talk also with video games and everything because we we always get comments. Uh, again, you know, this is our studio, so of course we do cover video games, and we have classic games mm -hmm. that we like to go back to, and we throw up in the background. So anytime we meet a, a fellow gamer, we're always curious to know what they're playing and uh, what they would recommend uh, to our audience. So mm -hmm. uh, two great answers. Uh, of course, I haven't played World of Warcraft in forever. Um, because we're too busy trying to cover. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's things. kind of, it's too difficult to catch up. <laughs> no, well, really. it, yeah, when you've got to do so many gaming reviews throughout the year when you're, you know, a news outlet, you know, you've got to kind of focus on that. And sometimes mm -hmm. games are so big that it, it's hard for us to even get all the way through it. You know, I can't, we, we, you've got three big games being released in, in a month. It's hard to, mm -hmm. you don't have time to put 100 hours into each one of them yeah, yeah. on top mm -hmm. of the living job. So, uh, but there's always games that we love to go back and uh, uh, play. I'm um, about to start my second run on Ghost of Tsushima, which was uh, actually our game of the year last year. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, uh, two fantastic choices. Uh, that'll <laughs> happen to the audience there. But anyway, I'm going to turn you back over to John. But I want to just mm -hmm. say congratulations on uh, on your first feature. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a beautiful film, uh, and we are very interested to know about your second project if it's going to be sci-fi. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We want to we want to be able to interview you again. 